There's a place in Papua New Guinea where carbon dioxide is bubbling out of the sea floor from natural volcanic vents. The CO2 mixes with water, causing this part of the ocean to become more acidic. It's like a time machine that allows us to look into the future to see what will happen to coral reefs if ocean acidification continues. Corals can't survive in this more acidic water. They're dissolving and turning to rubble, and there aren't many fish living on them. Coral reefs have been described as a canary in the coal mine. When they aren't happy, it's a sign that something is very wrong in the ocean. Our planet has been through five mass extinctions in the last 500 million years, and through all of these, corals have been the first to go down. Although they cover less than 1% of the sea floor, Coral reefs are home to 25 to 30 percent of all species in the ocean. They are the most biologically diverse natural communities on the planet. Much of the carbon dioxide that has been released since the Industrial Revolution has been absorbed into the ocean. When carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it makes the ocean more acidic. In a more acidic environment, animals who build shells and skeletons can't form. The ocean is 30% more acidic than it was before the Industrial Revolution. It is acidifying faster than in mass extinctions of the past. If this continues, coral reefs could literally start dissolving. 50% of the world's coral reefs are already gone, and scientists are predicting that all the world's corals could be wiped out by mid-century. But the effects of ocean acidification go far beyond coral reefs. Ocean acidification affects fish and their ability to smell and build skeletons. It also affects plankton. Plankton form the base of the oceanic food web. They produce the oxygen in two out of every three breaths we take. 40% of the plankton population has already been destroyed due to a combination of ocean warming and acidification. We are losing them at a rate of about 1% per year. There's a lag in the time it takes the ocean to absorb the carbon that has been emitted into the atmosphere. So even if carbon dioxide emissions went to zero today, it would take 20 or 30 years to equalize with the ocean for the ocean to continue becoming more acidic. In order to address these problems, we not only have to cut emissions, but pull carbon out of the atmosphere before it gets absorbed into the ocean. Forests, prairies, seagrass beds, mangroves, and many other natural communities sequester carbon. Many of them have been decimated and could pull large amounts of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere if they were allowed to regrow. Fish sequester carbon in their bodies and excrete gut rocks, which help balance the acidity of the ocean. 90% of the large fish have already been wiped out. There's a tremendous potential to sequester carbon by letting fish populations recover. Cabo Pulmo in Mexico is a great example of the potential of fish populations to rebound. Within 10 years of being declared a marine protected area, the amount of life in the ocean increased by over 450%. Fish went from being heavily depleted to thriving again. We're in a mass extinction. Many of the scientists I spoke to were doubtful that corals would survive past mid-century. To avert the worst effects of this catastrophe, we must protect and restore life and stand in the way of those industries 
that are destroying our planet.